Hello, 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 me little droogies. Time for a little of the old ultra violence. Last Outrider here with another Data Slate WOG update. This time we're going to be talking about my second favorite formation, <clears throat> Grazko's Bully Boys. If you watched my last video, I said basically if I were to ever play Orcs again and put competitively, it would basically consist of two formations. Council of Wag and these guys, Grazgul's Bully Boys. <clears throat> We're going to start with a little bit of the fluff. If Grazgul needs something done right, be it storming a heavily defended fortress gate or quelling a bust up between two rival orc clans, he will send in his bully boys to do the job. On occasion, he will lead them personally, though Grasgull's meanest and hardest knobs are a force to be reckoned with, even without the presence of their illustrious leader. The sight of these brutally powerful orcs, clad from head to toe in the shiniest and bestest mega armor from Orchimedes Mech Workshop, is an intimidating prospect for friend and foe alike. In battle, the bully boys storm forward into the thick of the fighting, where they lay about themselves with claw, saw, and the occasional vicious headbutt to tear a bloody hole in the enemy lines for the rest of the orcs to pour, pour through. Boom! Let's get to the nitty gritty because I swear, just describing these things kind of, oh, is just so exciting. Here they go. Here's the formation. The formation, if you don't know, formations are a new thing that are only in data slates. They basically say that if you take a certain amount of uh, groups together from the codex, in a, with certain restrictions, they will get new special powers. As I've said before, I believe that all the competitive armies in the future are basically going to be based upon formations. So, here we go. Glasgow's Bully Boys. Three units of Mega Knobs, baby. Restriction. All units must include at least five models not a problem <clears throat> basically i max them out it depends upon the points of the game you know i get the council and i which has the knobs unit and then i get these guys and here's how they work together because <laughs> wow go watch the other video in council so you can actually the council of wog so you can understand that formation if you haven't seen it yet okay they got special rules biggest and the best the boss is watching Fear and fearless. <clears throat> and if that's not enough, they come with a bag of chips, which says, Bully Boys, all models in this formation add one to the weapon skill characteristic on their profile. So again, let's get that straight. That's three, nah, three units of mega knobs, which you can add in as big of a mob as they allow you to make will suddenly all just get uh, plus one to their weapon skill. With the, with the, the restriction is you have to have five in a unit and three of them. Now let's go on to the other one. The biggest and the best and the boss is watching. Let's see because those, those are some of my favorite stuff too. I'm just zooming right there. Just zooming. If it works, it works. Here we go. The biggest and the best. This special rule only applies to a warlord chosen as part of a detachment or formation presented in this book. Not Codex Orcs. This book, Data Slate Wag. If your warlord has this special rule, he must always issue and accept a challenge whenever possible. If you have... More than one model in a combat with a special rule to this effect. You can choose which model issues or accepts the challenge. If a warlord with this special rule 
kills, sorry, an enemy character in a challenge, he can re-roll all failed wound saves in close combat for the rest of the game. So to sum up, you pretty much get to choose the model that will um, accept the challenge, and if it wins, you can re-roll all failed wounds in close combat for the rest of the game. Nice, nice stuff. <clears throat> the boss is watching. Units with this mob rule, special rule, that include at least one model from this detachment or formation gain a plus two modifier on any rolls on the mob rule table. Key rule. Plus two modifier on the mob rule table. Mob rule table. Yep. However, 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 should any of these units suffer hits from the breaking heads or squabble results on the mob rule table, they will suffer a D3 plus 3. Strength for AP non hits instead of D6 strength for AP blah hits. Mob for every model in a unit that has this special rule and the unit fails a morale check or pinning test after any re rolls they may have. So just failing the first one isn't enough. You have to fail the first one and the re rolls to trigger this result. Roll immediately on the following table. Born to fight. Orcs love fighting. And the prospect of a good punch-up will sometimes stop them from running off. If the unit is locked in combat, it is treated as if it has passed the morale check or pinning test. If the unit is not locked in combat, it fails the morale check or pinning test. So basically it says <clears throat> the only way to make it that make this mob run is if you shoot them and get them to fail. If they're in combat, they pass. Two to three, breaking heads. The mob leaders knocks a few heads together until the lads settle down and get back in the fight. If the unit includes one or more orc characters, including independent characters, including independent characters, it suffers D6 strength four hits, AP nut, and is then treated as if it had passed the morale check or pinning test. These hits are randomly allocated but cannot be allocated to orc characters. Any excess hits are lost. If the unit does not include any orc characters, it fails the morale check or pinning test. Squabble. That's five or six. A brawl breaks out as the orcs decide what to do and the dust settles. Nobody can remember what the trouble was about in the first place. If the unit has 10 or more models, it suffers a D6 strength 4 AP splat, hits, and is then treated as if it had passed morale check or pinning test. The hits are randomly allocated. If the unit has fewer than 10 models, it fails the morale check or pinning test. So, simple enough, right? And, of course, fear and Fearless. It's a brilliant mob. So now, like I said, you combine this with the Council of Wag, and you've basically got an army that can scale to whatever game you can imagine just about and just be freaking phenomenal. It's just amazing. And everybody's challenging everybody. It can even deal with challenge armies. It is a great combination, which I would love to play one day. Um, oh, so I hope you enjoy that. We're going on to the next formations in the next video. See you then. Bye.